Hello, my name is Tom Hogerheim, and the title of my project is The Effects of Disinfection and Sterilization Protocols on Preformed Pediatric Crowns. The supervisors for my master's project are Dr. Serbia Zafa and Professor Laurie Walsh. Before we discuss these crowns, we need to understand the reason for their placement, which is largely due to dental caries. Dental caries is the most common non-communicable disease in children, and the World Health Organization estimates that over half a billion children are affected. Early childhood caries can be defined as caries in primary teeth of children under the age of six, and it remains the leading cause of hospitalization in high socioeconomic countries. This graph here shows the prevalence of early childhood caries in Australia. The mean DMFT for children aged to six is indicated in blue, and the red line indicates the mean DMFT for children aged 12. The key takeaway point is that beginning in the early 2000s, we can see a steady increase in the rate or prevalence of early childhood caries in Australia. So this continues to be a problem for us today. There are a number of treatment options for early childhood caries, one being extraction, but we also have a number of restorative materials available to us, such as amalgam, glass ionomers, composite resins, copamers, and preformed crowns. The main types of preformed paediatric crowns are as follows. We have the preformed metal crown, also known as the stainless steel crowns, a veneered version of this, the much newer zirconia crowns, polycarbonate crowns, and the composite resin strip crowns. Now the preformed metal crowns have been the gold standard since their introduction in the late 1940s, and they come in a variety of different sizes. They're composed largely of iron, chromium, nickel, magnesium, silicon, and other elements. They're used for their reliability and durability for severely decayed or pulp-treated teeth, as well as teeth that have developmental defects. Despite there being clear guidelines as to their use, the vast majority of general practitioners don't use these crowns, and this is due to cost, aesthetic appearance, use of time, or lack of procedural knowledge. It should be noted, however, that pediatric dentists use these crowns routinely. Here we have the much newer zirconia crowns, which entered the Australian market in 2008, and aesthetically, they're ideal for restoring or disguising endodontically treated teeth, as they match the translucency of the surrounding dentition. They're highly biocompatible, biocompatible with smooth polished surfaces, attracting minimal plaque retention, as well as limited soft tissue inflammation. Their advantages are their durability, as well as their retentive capacity, and their low rates of wear on the opposing teeth. The disadvantages are their cost, increased preparation time, increased marginal reductions, and the lack of long-term follow-up studies. Now, the vast majority of pediatric dentists reuse preformed pediatric crowns after trying procedures, so after being exposed to potentially infectious bodily fluids. Simply discarding the contaminated units would be financially unsustainable in private practice. With emerging materials such as zirconia becoming more popular, the impact of sterilization techniques on emerging and pre-existing materials is warranted. The ideal protocol for sterilizing preformed crowns needs to be universally applied to all materials and be cost effective without damaging their integrity. The hypothesis of this project is that an evaluation of disinfection and sterilization protocols on preformed pediatric crowns will establish their suitability for reuse. The aim is to assess the aesthetic, morphological, and elemental variations of preformed pediatric crowns after chemical disinfection and heat sterilization. The rationale being that there is no consensus or industry-wide guidelines that currently exist for clinicians to reuse these crowns. One paper found that in preformed metal crowns, the alloy's corrosion resistance directly influences the release rate of metallic ions. Another paper found heat sterilization of preformed metal crowns induces cracking and crazing, thus exposing potential sites for pitting corrosion to occur. So the experimental design for my study is as follows. We broadly have three treatment groups. We have the ultrasonic disinfection followed by heat sterilization, the instrument washer disinfection followed by heat sterilization, and a medical grade opal disinfectant. Now each of these broad categories undergoes one, five or 10 cycles. And this is done to replicate what we might see in private practice. So under each of these competing sterilization and disinfection protocols, particularly with increasing the number of cycles, do we see any differences in the crown materials? That is the question. For the data collection, 
To get the surface characterization, we did this using the scanning electron microscopy. So images were collected at three distinct sites on each crown using three magnification, magnifications. And we also did aesthetic and macro imaging. So the crowns were photographed with standardized color strips for comparative records. And the images were then analyzed using Adobe Photoshop to compare luminosity levels with the controls. And macro imaging was also conducted to assess any broad topographical changes compared with the untreated samples. So the results are as follows. For the opal disinfectant here, now we have the controls on the leftmost column. We have the zirconia, the veneered preformed metal crown, and the preformed metal crown. And we have each of the treatment groups at one, five, and 10 cycles. Broadly speaking here, for the macro images, there were no discernible differences noted. When looking at the luminosity levels, again, quantitatively, there were no differences or no statistically significant differences for any of these crown materials across any number of cycles after exposed to the opal disinfectant. The images to the right only show the preformed metal crown after opal disinfectant had been applied at one, five and 10 cycles. Currently, I don't have the imaging completed for the zirconia or the veneered preformed metal crown or the controls. So the conclusions I can draw at this time are fairly limited. However, with the images shown here, which are representative of the three distinct zones that were captured, there were no differences noted, but this is a qualitative statement. Next, we have the ultrasonic disinfection followed by the heat treatment or the autoclave. The key finding here was that for the veneered preformed metal crown, it did appear to lose its sheen as it moved through the, uh, the cycles. Now that wasn't noted for the zirconia crowns and it wasn't noted for the preformed metal crown. Now, if we compare the luminosity levels, there was no statistical difference for this. But again, if I jump back, you can clearly see that there is a change in the appearance of the crown, most noticeable at five cycles. And this was found to be fairly consistent across each of the samples that we treated. Again, the images to the right only show the preformed metal crown for the ultrasonic followed by the autoclave. Once again, no discernible differences were noted with one to five to 10 cycles, but it is difficult to comment on that as I don't have the controls. And we also don't have any information from the zirconia or the veneered preformed metal crown. Finally, we had the instrument washer again at one, five and 10 cycles. We did notice for the material of the veneer that we were getting a chipping or a fragmentation of that veneer layer. And you can see where my cursor is, the underlying stainless steel layer is starting to peek through in a few regions. And that was noted mostly towards the end. So eight, nine, 10 cycles, we started to notice that fragmentation on the veneer surface. For the zirconia and the preformed metal crown, no differences were noted. Luminosity levels, no statistical differences from one through to 10 cycles for the instrument washer disinfection and autoclave sterilization. And for the images to the right, again, only the preform metal crown, no differences were noted. And for all of those magnifications, they were taken at 235. So in summary, clinicians have access to a variety of materials to restore the pediatric dentition. The concept of reusing the contaminated preformed crowns requires further examination. The inconsistency in sterilization techniques and reuse, we believe, offers a gap in the literature. So a comparative study assessing the aesthetic, structural and elemental impact of disinfection and sterilization techniques on preformed crowns, we believe, offers a novel contribution to the literature. So further data collection will determine any changes and one such aspect is tensile properties using the Vickers hardness test. So are there any changes in the hardness of these materials having undergone all of these procedures that will be conducted as well as further SEM imaging. Thank you all for listening and thank you to both my supervisors, Dr. Serbia Zafa and Professor Laurie Walsh for their input and their assistance.